I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses for a living. And it looks like our uh, first, next question that comes from somebody who may do that as well. Yeah, uh, this is from Amy. And hello, uh, you've asked uh, several questions here before. Yeah, nice to see you here again. Okay, so this is a long question. Let's summarize some of the parts of it. Um, it starts out talking about a uh, paper that just recently came out. It was in BioArchive a couple months ago. Uh, and this is from Germany, and they're looking at the drug uh, fluoxetine. And fluoxetine is an inhibitor of sphingomyelinase, and, uh, which is, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's one of these intracellular processes that's going to be involved in uh, endocytic transport. Uh, and sphingomyelin is like a little bit taller than the other lipids in your membrane. It makes little uh, rafts that sort of float around, and certain proteins sit there. Well, whatever, right? Yeah, that's, that's not why we're here. Um, let's see. Uh, so it's looking at those, and uh, they actually look at a couple other um, related drugs in the paper. And they test it mostly on influenza virus, but a little bit on uh, SARS coronavirus too, and show that it seems to knock the virus down, and they're proposing that it's happening at the level of um, the virus not being able to fuse. Like the virus is attaching just fine, it's going in just fine, but then once it goes in, it just can't get back out. Um, one of the effects of these drugs, which is kind of weird, is that they would increase the amount of cholesterol in these internal compartments inside the cell. And this is not in a way that's going to kill you or something if you're, if you're watching this and saying, whoa, isn't cholesterol bad? Uh, this is fine. Yeah, cells make a lot of it, transport it around all the time. We're just pushing it from one part of the cell to another part of the cell, so it's no big deal uh, there particularly. But from old papers on um, other coronaviruses, we know that uh, having cholesterol in the membrane is really important for virus membrane fusion. And this increases the amount of cholesterol in the membrane, which would to the layperson <laughs> seem to be like, oh, wouldn't that increase fusion? But it's also messing up an enzyme, and this enzyme is going to be connected up in 50 other ways, probably 45 of which we don't understand, and I, I definitely don't understand. Um, and so it, you, when you put in one of these drugs, you're always doing more than you think you're doing. And the question is always just, like, how clean is it and how clean can you show it is? Um, I had a look at the paper. I don't think their mechanism is as clean as they would like you to believe it is, or maybe that they thought it was. Um, so they're proposing that it's uh, going in and it's having its effect in the endosome and blocking the virus from being able to enter cells. They show that you get less virus infection after treatment, but it's not like a ton less virus infection. Um, in one of the uh, tables toward the end, uh, or no, it's actually a graph, they go from about 17 cells in every picture down to somewhere between three cells with the high dose and, I don't know, it was like five or six cells uh, with the low dose. So you're talking a what? Yeah, three to six fold uh, decrease in the amount of virus at fairly high amounts of drug. And so, eh, I don't know. Yeah, that seems a little, yeah, <laughs> a little marginal um, to me. Yeah. Um, the other thing they didn't do is they didn't just look at um, uh, entry. So when the coronavirus goes in, yes, it enters, but. Replication is also super dependent on um, lipids. And uh, it's been shown that things that inhibit lipid synthesis or inhibit lipid breakdown um, can both have terrible effects and just basically shut the virus down, prevent infection from ever getting started. In this case, we think the virus gets all the way into the cell. It just finds a barren cell that it can't do anything with once it's in there. And it just is strangled and it dies, which is great. Great news. Yeah. Um, so I would bet that's the effect that they're actually seeing, and they didn't do anything to look for that in particular. They could have gone in with um, what we call pseudovirus particles, which is a fancy word, isn't it? It just means you take the shell of some other virus and you put uh, the spikes of coronavirus on the outside of it, and you put something like a green fluorescent protein inside, and then you put this in and you count how many cells turn green. That's just a delivery assay. You don't have to deliver and then start to grow and do, you know, the 500 things that coronavirus actually does as part of its uh, replication cycle. Um, so, yeah, I think this is tangled up. I think this is probably not a viable strategy for 
inhibiting the virus in vivo, although it's kind of neat. And yeah, like you're saying, uh, I, I had certainly never seen uh, this mechanism even proposed before. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if they can reproduce this in like even a mouse model. That would be impressive and for me, unexpected. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Amy uh, also mentioned, uh, I think correctly, um, um, how it's really difficult to go from in vitro where you've got just a little flask with your cells and your virus and nothing else in there. And you can let them, you know, fight it out when you put a different drug in um, and go from that even to a small animal or from that to an actual person that has a life and goes to the store and does all kinds of weird stuff all the time. Um, yeah, there are, it's a big leap and things that work out in the small contained environment, like a little virus zoo, quite often do not really pan out uh, outside. And, uh, yeah, remdesivir, as the question says, being the latest example of meh, yeah, <laughs> which, yeah, remdesivir absolutely flexed on, uh, SARS-CoV-2 and a whole bunch of other coronaviruses in, you know, in, uh, the early trials, it just dominated those things. In an actual person, it helps a little, but it's, yeah, it's still not as much as you would hope, and it doesn't have as much of an effect as you'd really think based on what it's doing and how effective it can be. So, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, fantastic question. Um, very interesting paper. I am so glad you brought that to my attention. I had not run across that one. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, very interested to read it, and, um, no, I really doubt it's going to turn into anything, but my doubts have no place here, and they do not matter. This thing is either going to work or not work, and it won't be because I thought it would or wouldn't. It'll just be because it does. That's science, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks very much uh, for a very good question, and, uh, all the best. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.